In this video, I'm going to give you guys 15 tips that will change your gameplay in Rainbow Six Siege. These are some new things I have noticed about you guys and if you fix them or do them in your rank games, you will definitely improve. So let's get right into it and don't forget to like and subscribe. Cut off angles. My number one tip is to focus more on cutting off different angles in the map when you're attacking. A lot of times I see players opening side wall, but they just stand there forever. You gotta open more doors and windows so the defenders feel the pressure and get forced to take gunfights or just run away. A simple example is on Villa, where we cut off master door, bathroom, and then I wrap it on astro windows so no one can play close bathroom door. You don't need a team for this. You just have to understand how can you play better with your random teammates. Because there are a lot of solo queue players who are lost and you don't want to be one of those. Tip number two, do not assume anything. This is something we all do in our games and it's a huge mistake that can cause rounds. Thinking with yourself that your teammates are holding your flank or they have checked every corner with their drones can get you killed. And then it leads to blaming teammates and to be honest, it can be teammates faults but in the first place, it was you who relied on them. However, expecting someone hiding in some corner or swinging you is what you want to do in your games. Moving on to number three, stop sprinting. Times that you want to run in siege are few, because first of all, it makes sound and you don't want to let your enemies know where you are, and second, you take gunfights when you're not ready. Imagine if I was just walking and aiming in this clip. I could have killed Torn, but because I was running, she heard me, and I didn't get the chance to ADS and hold a tight angle. Tip number four, smoke them, not yourself. You gotta use your smoke grenades correctly. When you smoke yourself, you block your line of sight and allow defenders to push you without worrying about anything. But if you smoke their rotation or peak holes, then they are forced to go through the smoke and face three or four different angles when they don't know where you are exactly or they just have to take another way but if you or your teammates smoke wrong then don't just stand there push in and cover your teammates i have, I have to hold it i have to hold it he's gonna push you close Nice. Let's go. Yeah, split, split, split. <laughs> For the next one, play close to your team. Whether you're on attack or defense, you have to play close to your teammates so you can refrag them, put more pressure on the opponents, or help them with your utility. Don't be one of those solo queue players who are doing their own thing across the map and they probably get one kill, one death at the end of that round. Together as a team, you can hire up your chance of winning, just like this round on Team Park. Someone is pushing Capcan and I'm holding his bathroom. Then to Kaibi thinks Capcan is the only one in lab, so I get that kill. Now I'm getting pushed by two guys but look at my teammates they have the game sense to come close and fight with me instead of sitting outside and letting me die i even get healed by doc which leads to two kills Nice enough. Tip number six is about diffuser bait. How many times you were in a diffuse situation and you won? In Siege, because the diffuse takes four beeps, attackers can hide or push based on that sound. They usually don't do anything with the first beep, but with the second or third, they start getting closer to kill you, so you won't diffuse. But here's how you want to do it. I've seen some players who start diffusing and let go, and then they do it again. This results in two fast beeps after each other, which is so obvious. If you think attackers are going to get baited and push you, you're wrong. Instead, just do it normally and hold the diffuse until you reach the second or third beep, and then then clutch the round. Nice, Ina! Number 7. Isolate gunfights and push the easy way. If you learn this technique in Siege, you win so many more gunfights and games. Starting with gunfights, it's always better to find 1v1s or 3v1s. You want to kill the guy alone, not the guy who has 2 or 3 teammates next to him covering his flank. Now, you might be on the opposite situation, which is clutch situation. It's 1v4. Focus on one guy only, challenge only that guy, and don't expose yourself to any other angles. When you get that kill, then find another 1v1, and so on. Now, how about where you push? There's always one room or area that there are less people playing there. You might want to focus on that area more because it's easier to deal with. So sometimes you see the enemy team is roaming heavily on the other side of the map. So why not just push side where there's only one guy? Tip number eight. If you suck at one map, get into T hunt. I know you have some maps that they don't like. You probably get zero kills on them as well. So why not just put your T hunt on those maps and get used to different angles, rooms, and get a good understanding on where to push or hold. Do this and I guarantee you, you win more gunfights and have an easier way to play that map. Moving on to next one, go for safe spawn picks. Listen, I'm not a good spawn picker myself. So I just stick to basics and wait for the attackers to get into building. But safe spawn picks or something that they don't expect might just be the winning hand. If there is no risk and the reward is huge, then why not do it? You make them tilt it, get the mana advantage and a free kill. Number 10. Waste time. Fall back, hold crossfire. When it comes to defending, there is a lot you are not doing, such as wasting time, falling back and holding crossfires, or sometimes just hide because the attacker is going to run out of time. You necessarily don't have to get a kill when you are roaming or defending. Some of it is just mind games or wasting time and utility. Take this round where I call they are low on time and then me and my duo are able to hold it together. 45 seconds, can we just play side? 20 seconds, bro. Okay. Blow me. 15 seconds. Maybe hide, hide, just hide, just hide, just hide. 10 seconds to go. Op 4 found the bomb, but defend it. Op 4 remaining. 
That's a good one. Tip 11. Make sure to talk and communicate with your team. Every game we get into, by we I mean me and my duo, we start talking about the strat, or where we want to push, or what we would like our teammates to do, and there's no surprise. They start talking as well, because nobody wants solo queue players who don't give calls or play for themselves. By communicating, you also create a good vibe that even if you lose rounds or get less kills than the others, you can bring it back up. Just shoot, just shoot, just shoot 5v4. Sparrow's castled. Okay. Can you open the castle from you or no? No one saw that, no one saw that. Oh, he opened, nice. Can you go Sparrow, think of, somehow? That would be good. I can go, I can just run through this. We need someone to open meeting. Uh, Ash, can you open it? I'm in here. Uh, in, in this little room, in this little room. I'm planting, I'm planting, I'm planting. Cover, cover, cover. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Front test, front test. Front test. Front test. Let's just play safe, play safe, play safe. Push that, place place it, place it. Place it. No, no need. Okay. Now this one is kind of simple, but it's for settings. Still, after all these years, I see people playing with low field of views. Your FOV needs to be higher than 80, so you can see further and see more on the sides. Playing lower than 80 only puts you in a disadvantage. Moving on to number 13, if something seems free, take it. Most of the times I see people drone, drone, and drone. It's free. You can just figure out based on their setup or sound. Take map control without wasting time. You never want to put too much time on droning. Once you have some info, then it's more about taking actions such as clearing utility and cutting off angles. And and then just taking gunfights. He's hard. Gotta reload. It's sunrise. I think he's down. Make way for Yes, he's down. He's down. My next tip is about pre-fires. If you know your opponent is there and he knows you're there as well, then why not just shoot before you see him? It increases your chances by far. They already to pick you and as soon as they do, they run into your bullets. Work. Nice, one more. Nice, you know. One in cocktail. One here. Cocktail, in cocktail, in cocktail, in cocktail. Dead, dead, dead. Nice work. Last operator standing. You got this, you got this, you got this. Pushing, pushing. Nice, Ina! And my last tip is improve your mechanics. Listen, if you still have problem with peeking or movement or aim, stop being lazy and get into free for all. I'm always playing free for all before I play rank, and it's such a good practice for improving my mechanics in general. And since you're playing against real players with different guns and speeds, you have to work on your positioning as well. Not to mention some of the maps you play or rank maps you play, so you get used to different angles and rooms. Push it, push it. Wait. Where is he? Oh, 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 oh. Also, same, 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 same spot, same spot. He's in, the rotation, in laundry now, in laundry. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Much love you all, and until the next one, stay safe.